And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Division brings defeat. Every kingdom, every church, every community, every city, every house, every family divided against itself. One part is going this way, they were amazed and happy and they glorified God. The other part is going the other direction, they were filled with envy and jealousy. And so Jesus said, take it, because every kingdom, every group of people, every society, every city, every house, family, divided against itself will collapse will be defeated will not stand and then uh, we we'll read the whole chapter during the time of uh, uh, scripture preparation let's look at verse 46 now in verse 46 it says while he yet talked to the people Christ was preaching that's what he came to do on earth. He was teaching the people. That's what he came to do. That's what the Father sent him to do. And while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. What do you think? A doctor is performing an operation and is treating the patient and uh, the mother and the brother and the sisters they come will want to see him what do you expect will he leave the operation table and go and attend to mother and brothers and sisters of course no a pilot is wanting to fly the airplane and as he's about to go and he said um, your mother your brothers your sisters they are waiting they want to talk to you and we don't know how long that will take it's not going to leave what he ought to do and the people of the world they're doing something significant something helpful something to move the nation forward and then somebody says your mother your brothers your sister they're waiting for you they want to talk to you they're not going to live what they did christ our savior christ our teacher christ our redeemer he was at the very center of doing what the father had called him to do and then they said your mother your brothers your sisters they're waiting they want to talk to you verse 47 in verse 47 then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee if you were what will you do because you must remember that now we we'll walk in the steps of Christ we we'll teach like he taught we we'll lead like he led we we'll move like he moved and we are in the ministry we are engaged in the ministry like he was engaged in the ministry watch him looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith what he did how he did it that's the way we're to carry on and be engaged in the work of the Lord today and so then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak of thee verse 48 in verse 48 then he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother in comparison with the heavenly father who is my mother in comparison with the one who has sent me 
and uh, who are my brethren in comparison with the God of heaven? in comparison with the ministry the heavenly father has put into my hands he wasn't going to leave the ministry and attend to them and then in verse 49 he reveals his very heart unto us and he reveals where our priority should be where our concentration should be and where our devotion, our consecration will have meaning. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. Look at verse 50. In verse 50, for whosoever shall do. Not that they profess. Not that they just talk, not that they just say, uh, you know, pretend to be whosoever. A Jew, a Gentile, whosoever, a man, a woman, whosoever, anyone that comes to him and is converted and is consecrated and is committed and is committed to doing the will of God whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my brother and sister and mother I pray that the world will have a sitting place settled place in every one of our hearts in Jesus name Tonight, as we look at this, uh, you know, extended uh, passage, we're looking at the treasure of transformed tongues in his family. The treasure of transformed tongues in his family. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the thoughts that trap transgressors in misery. The thoughts that trap transgressors in misery. Number two, the tongues that twist the truth in his miracles. Number three, taking the teachable and the transformed as true members. Taking the teachable and the transformed as true members let's look at number one number one the thoughts that trap transgressors in misery we're looking at three things here number one the thoughts of unbelief and blasphemy number two the tie of unbelievers with Beelzebub number three the treachery of the unconverted against the begotten that's against Christ the only begotten son of God let's look at number one number one the thoughts of unbelief and blasphemy we're looking at it from Luke from Matthew chapter 12 verse 24 Matthew chapter 12 reading from verse 24 and when the Pharisees heard it they heard about the miracle they heard about the deliverance they heard about the dumb and the deaf hearing and speaking when the Pharisees heard it they said this fellow can you imagine referring to the very son of God this fellow when people are filled with tradition with religion that cannot save when people are filled with their own ways and their own thoughts they will refer to anyone even the beloved son of God as this fellow they said this fellow does not cast out devils but by Beelzebub the prince of the devils if you are sick you better not listen to those Pharisees. If you are depressed, if you are oppressed, you better not listen to those Pharisees because they will take the work of God 
and attribute it to the devil. They'll take the miracle manifestation of the Spirit of God and attribute that to Beelzebub. And then in verse 25, verse 25, and Jesus knew their thoughts. He knows our thoughts. He knows your thoughts. He knows my thoughts. Actually, our actions do not tell the whole story about us. The thoughts behind the action. Actually, our speech, our utterance does not tell the whole story about us. It's the thought behind the speech. Actually, our look on our faces. Our looks do not tell the whole story about us. It's the thought behind the look. Actually, the flattery and the appreciation and the things that people say those things do not tell the whole story is the thought behind the speech behind the utterance behind the action that tells the story in the presence of god concerning us actually our testimonies of salvation i am saved I am sanctified, I am baptized in the Holy Ghost. All that does not tell the whole story. The thought in our hearts, the thoughts in our mind, is the thought that shows God who we really are. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand verse 26 it says if satan cast out satan is divided against himself how shall then his kingdom stand that's obvious. In verse 27, it says, And if I, but Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children? Because you remember, this is chapter 12. In chapter 10, he had given power and authority to his disciples. Those disciples were Jews, and they were children of the Jews. That's why he said, all right, I cast out devils and I sent all those 12 two by two and everywhere they went, they cast out devils. Tell me, if I am casting out devils by Beelzebub, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Verse 28, in verse 28, he says, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. You can enter if you repent. The kingdom of God is come unto you. The very fact that I cast out devils, I heal the sick, by the Spirit of God is an evidence to you that the kingdom of God is come. The king is here. He reigns in authority. He reigns in power. The very fact that you know that the king is reigning, reigning over the kingdom of the devil makes you to know if the king is here, the kingdom is come and is for you. The kingdom is come unto you. Will you be saved? You have the opportunity. And will you be free from all the powers of the devil? You have the opportunity. The kingdom is come unto you. Verse 29, it says, Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man. He had power to bind the strong one. You have power to bind the strong one. I said you have power to bind the strong one. 
how he that believeth in me the works i do he shall do also and greater works than these shall he do because i go to the father if he ask anything in my name i will do it he will answer your prayer as you believe and when you believe and you pray for those they are deaf or dumb they have this incredible disease or that incredible disease as you pray for them they will get healed then he said you bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house look at Vastachi in Vastachi he that is not with me is against me he that is not with me now you cannot be neutral in what the lord is doing i'm neutral i'm neither there nor here i'm neutral i'll not pray about what is going on i'm neutral i will not contribute to what i'm not opposed to what they're doing only i am neutral no you cannot be he that is not with me is against me and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad but start one he then says wherefore i say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men but the blasphemy against the holy ghost shall not be forgiven unto men what does that mean he had said if i cast out evil spirits by the spirit of god then the kingdom of god is come unto you so the work of the spirit of god casting out devils healing the sick delivering the oppressed breaking every yoke removing the curse is the work of the spirit but they took that work and attributed it to Beelzebub that sin against the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost and he said if you were to talk against me directly alone you repent you'll be forgiven but if you take the work of the spirit the miracle the signs and the wonders and the healing and the deliverance if you attribute that to the devil that sin against the holy spirit and sin against the holy spirit has no forgiveness here in this world or in the world to come he was warning them to be very careful to be very thoughtful and not allow their opinion of religion to carry them away and commit any sin that never has forgiven look at number two here number two the tie of unbelievers with Beelzebub now these people that search that Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten of the Father. These people that said that Christ was associated, affiliated, and united with Beelzebub, the chief of the devils, they themselves were the people who were associated and affiliated with Beelzebub. John chapter 8, we're reading from verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye of your father, the devil. They were accusing him. You know, when a thief is hiding behind the ignorance of the people and is pointing to an innocent man and he said, that's the thief. And then the one is accusing as the thief, being innocent and pure and spotless and righteous, he turns around, he said, okay, now, 
that you have said what you shouldn't have said i'm going to expose you you are the theme that's what christ did here now you he says ye of your father the devil and the works and the laws of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and i put not in the truth because there is no truth in him and when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it he was they themselves they were of the devil they were the people that tied themselves associated themselves and integrated themselves to Beelzebub and the works of the devil and then they were pointing accusing finger to the innocent Christ who was healing the sick and delivering the oppressed I pray you'll not be like that you will not belong to the devil I will not belong to the devil why should we belong to the devil he has given us all things he gave us salvation he gave us sanctification he gave us the power of the holy ghost he gave us the power to heal and the power to deliver he writes our name in the book of life and we're joint heirs with him and if we have all things all things given unto us why will we carry ourselves to the devil what are we looking for we have everything we need i have everything i need you will not go to the devil you will not have secret power from the devil the supernatural power you have already that's enough you weep the devil any corner anywhere he meets you in jesus name look at number three here number three here we're looking at the treachery of the unconverted against the only begotten son of God. It tells us in Zephaniah chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 4. Zephaniah chapter 3, we're looking at verse 4. It says, her prophets are light and treacherous, and treacherous persons. Those people, they claim to be masters of the law, and they claim to be teachers of the people, and they claim to be priests and preachers among the people, but they were treacherous. Our prophets are large and treacherous persons. Our priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. They have taken the law of God, they have turned that apart, they've turned it upside down, and they have misinterpreted, misrepresented God, the lawgiver. He tells us in verse 5, in verse 5 it says, The just Lord is in the midst thereof, and he will not do iniquity. Christ will not do iniquity. God will not do iniquity. The Holy Spirit will not do iniquity. And the people who are possessed with the Holy Ghost, they will not do iniquity. Every morning, does he bring his judgment to light? He faileth not. He faileth not. He will not fail in your ministry. He will not fail in your undertaking, your endeavors. The works of your hands will prosper. Your ministry will prosper. He faileth not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. The unrighteous knoweth no shame. The unconverted knoweth no shame. Look at those Pharisees, powerless Pharisees traditional pharisees and they were not ashamed that they were fruitless in their ministry nobody came into the kingdom of god through their ministry and then christ who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him they were not ashamed to criticize him the unjust knoweth no shame you will not be like that 
the words of God and the truth of God will abide with you as you minister and you care for the people and you love the people and you bring them to the Lord in Jesus name in Luke chapter 11 verse 52 Luke chapter 11 verse 52 woe unto you lawyers for ye have taken away the key of knowledge ye have taken away the key of knowledge they had mutilated defiled destroyed misinterpreted the knowledge of the truth in the old covenant they took away the key of knowledge the key that opens the door for us to have understanding for us to have insight for us to have a proper faith in the Lord. They took away the key that opened the door to knowledge. They have, ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves. They were not born again. They were not saved. Their lives showed that. Their rigidity showed that. Their self-righteousness showed that. Their talk, the criticism of their mouth showed that they did not enter into the kingdom themselves. And them that, are, that were entering in, ye hindered. That's why he said, woe unto them. I will not be like that. You will not be like that. You will enter into the abundance of the kingdom and then you bring others to enter in joyfully, excitedly, by faith. You will not be a hindrance to the people who need the blessings of God in Jesus' name. We're looking at point number two. Point number two, we're looking at the tongues that twist the truth in his miracles. Well, already you know the passage after they saw the miracles and they saw the great, great wonders of the Lord, their tongue twisted the truth concerning the miracles of Christ. Three things here. Number one, the perversion and twisting of his miracles. Number two, the perverseness and trampling on his message the trampled on the message of Christ number three the pain of turning from their own mercy they turned away from their own mercy by their attitude by their utterance by their speech by their action number one the perversion of twisting is miracles in number one he tells us in luke reading from chapter 11 reading from verse 14 luke chapter 11 verse 14 and he was casting out a devil and it was dumb and it came to pass when the devil was gone out if you speak in the name of the lord the devil will come out Dumb devil will come out. Afflicting devil will come out. Deaf devil will come out. If devil of infirmity, spirit of infirmity, they'll come out in Jesus' name. And he was casting out a devil, and it was and it was dumb. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out, the dumb speak, and the people wondered and they were told in verse 15 in verse 15 but some of them said he casteth out devils through Beelzebub the chief of devils verse 16 in verse 16 and others tempting him such of him a sign from heaven what are the sign what are they looking for? Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah chapter 35 that the dead will hear, the dumb will speak, 
that lame will rise up and walk and then there'll be an highway and highway of holiness it says the unclean shall not pass over it but then the redeemed and ransomed of the lord shall come was sinking and joy from their mouth they had seen the sign already the sick getting healed the demonized getting delivered that's a sign from heaven and now they were saying show us a sign they were perverse in their hearts and they twisted the miracles of the Lord and look at John chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 37 John chapter 12 verse 37 but though he had done so many miracles before them yet they believed not on him what sign were they looking for again? He had done many miracles among them, yet they believed not on him. Look at John chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 24. John 15, 24. If I had not done among them the works that none other man did, from the foundation of the world, until the time of Christ, the miracles he did in a few days, the miracles he did in the span of the years of his ministry, no man in the old covenant had ever done any miracles like that. Put all the prophets together, all those prophets, everything he did, no man among them or all of them together had ever done that and yet he came up and did all that now they have no excuse if i had not done among them the works which none other man did they had not had seen but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father and they were told in verse 25 verse 25 but this come to pass that the word may be fulfilled which is written in their law they hated me without a cause how could you hate a person like that he forgives sinners the people they said moses said we should stone her what do you say? I forgive her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And the people that were sick, they brought them from all over, from their villages, from the surrounding, and they cast them at his feet, and he healed all of them. Lazarus, that was dead for four days, he came there, and without touching anything, just said, uh, take here away the stone and then he spoke and said Lazarus come forth how could they hate anybody like that the depravity of the heart the sinful nature in their heart the damnic nature in their heart and the nature of the devil in their heart made them to do that but now they had no excuse. We who have come to the Lord and were born again, and he has taken away that mind of the devil, he has taken away that depravity from our heart, and he cleansed us, and he purged us, and he purified us, and we do not have the nature of the devil in us anymore. We cannot be like the Pharisees. We will not be like the Pharisees. We will not talk like the Pharisees. It's done so much good in our lives, in our families, in our church, and even to the people out there all over the world. It's done so much. It's done it in our church. It's done it in other churches. It's done it through our ministers. It's done it through other ministers. All we can say is, glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. 
Look at number two here. Number two here. Their perverseness and trampling of his miracle. Uh, let's look now at John chapter 10. We're looking at verse 20. John chapter 10, verse 20. And many of them said, He has a devil. They were like parrots. What their leader said, that's what they said. They didn't understand. Like parrots. What Pharisees, Sadducees said, he has a devil. They also chorused that. There are people that don't have any mind of their own. They cannot think with their own mind. What others have said, that's what they parrot. There are people, they cannot see with their own eyes. What the Pharisees have said, that's what they parrot. There are people, they cannot walk with their own legs. They cannot reason with their own brain. And you're like that, you've not found anything wrong in the Christ of Calvary. The Christ, our Savior. The Christ, our Redeemer. And what you read from those uh, people that, you know, write some things now. God does not heal today. Christ does not heal today. And uh, if there's any healing, it is coming from the devil. You read it from the books of those uh, Pharisaic theologians. And then you parrot that. Why don't you have a mind of your own? Why don't you go to the Bible? Why don't you read the promises? Why don't you know that Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever? Now, if they say there are no more miracles today, I'm asking them now, is salvation a miracle? They say yes. It's the greatest miracle to change the life of a man and turn the heart of a man unto God. I said, okay, if salvation is a miracle are people getting salvation today yes 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 then the age of miracles have not passed god is still working miracles does god answer prayers today they say yes you know if you are not talking about healing they said any other prayer you pray we know that god answers prayer today i said okay if god answers prayer today and provides today abundantly for the people that call on him and they will not deny his word is answer to pray a miracle they say yes yes okay if god is still answering prayers today then the age of miracles is not past Give me a good amen. amen. And so, but these ones, many of them said, he has a devil. You have to be very careful that you don't repeat gossip. The gossip of people and the wrong notions of people. They say it and you say it, you'll be like parrots. Now, in this age, there are people that will say things that are unfounded. Those things never, never, never happened. And you'll say, so and so did or said this and this. And you read that, you say, what? And without anybody pushing you, you also will take that chant, what's up? Or take that text, and then you send it to other people. That one you will say, what? Something like this happening? And then they will take that and send to other people. They might be gossiping, blackmailing, or destroying somebody's name. They might be saying something that never happened. And then you are passing that on, passing that on. You are like these people, like parrots. And you're saying what is not true about a minister, about a pastor, about an overseer, about their families. Well, when judgment comes on the originator of that email, the originator of that text, the originator of that charge, your share in the punishment your share 
in the trauma, in the torment, because you said what was not true about other people. And when they said that about Christ, they said, many of them said, he has a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Why hear ye him? Now, look at what God himself said. These people that just repeated what the Pharisees said, and they said, don't listen to him. Don't hear him. Look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. While he yet speak, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the clouds, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The Father said, Hear ye him. The Father commanded, Hear ye him. And those people that were parroting what the Pharisees said, they said, Why hear him? Don't hear him. But the Father said, Hear ye him. The Father has commanded us that now all truth resides in Christ. In days gone by, he speak by the prophets in diverse ways, but now he speaks by his only Son, whom he has ordained. Hear him, you'll keep on hearing him. I will keep on hearing him. Look at number three here now. Number three, the pain of turning from their own mercy. The pain of turning from their own mercy. Christ came with mercy, with grace, with healing, with salvation, with new life. Christ came with the open door that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And that was the mercy of God. But they shut the door against themselves. Jonah chapter 2, reading from verse 8. In Jonah chapter 2, verse 8, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Pharisees, Sadducees, all those Jews that listen to the Pharisees and they shut the door of mercy, of salvation against themselves. Have you seen all, all those uh, people in the, in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the people were bringing all their sick folks, the Pharisees never, never brought any one sick person unto Christ. They allowed their relatives, they allowed their relations, they allowed their people to die in their sicknesses. They will not bring their sick unto Christ. Have you noticed any of those Pharisees? They were there, and the power of God and the power of the Lord was mighty, present to heal. Even though he healed in their presence, they never said, I need healing too. I need miracle. Never, never. Because they shut the door of mercy against themselves. And then when they heard that they raised Lazarus from the dead, what did they do? They said, This man doeth many miracles. If we let him alone, then all the people will flock after him. And then he will teach them not to fight. He will teach them to be meek and lowly. And then the Romans will take advantage of us. The Romans will come and take our nation from us. They prophesied it. That's why Titus, General Titus, came from Rome 70 AD and wiped them all away and scattered them. That's what they said. They did not seek the mercy the miracle 
of the Lord Jesus Christ, they closed the door of mercy against themselves. Jonah chapter 2 verse 8, they that observed lying vanities forsake their own mercy. And look at Matthew chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 37. Matthew chapter 23 verse 37. Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee. How? How often would I have gathered the children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings and ye would not look at verse 38 it says in verse 38 behold i leave your house your house is led unto you desolate i pray that will not happen to us it will not happen to you and the Lord is going about and touching every life and healing everyone, healing their soul, healing their spirit, healing their body, healing their families. Your families will come and you will come. It will heal all your family. It will deliver everyone in Jesus' name. Can you imagine somebody is unhappy because of this and that? And what he is unhappy about, he did take it to the Lord in prayer to say, I directed my son to do this, to say this, not to do this, not to say this. If you are taking that thing to the Lord in prayer, he would have told you that thing that bothered you. It's not that man, the pastor, trying to, you know, uh, do evil against you he loves you he has to but then you take that to heart and now the global crusade is touching people everywhere and then uh, you know you stay in your house you will not even look at the thing on your set i'm not talking about you i'm talking about somebody else uh, and then uh, you know the fellow will just do, and then we ask friend what's the matter god is at work Great things are happening. Miracles that we never saw before. All these things are happening. Why are you not there? Mm, I'm, I'm not happy. Why, what are you not happy about? I'm not happy with the pastor. The way he, you know, he did it this way, did it this way, or did not do this, did not do that. So I'm not happy with him. My brother, the one you are not happy with is happy with himself. Is happy with the Lord. Is happy is jumping about. He doesn't know that somebody is not happy, but he is happy. Am I happy? Yeah. And then why are you hurting yourself? Forget about that. Even if the pastor was wrong, you know, the Lord is happy with him. He said, This is my servant. I sent him, and my favor is upon his life. Come and share of that favor. This miracle crusade, global crusade, is coming again. It's, uh, you know, at Hilary. And they say the calm ground, they say it's a yen corny. Do you know a yen corny? The birds are singing. The angels are singing. The believers are singing. The sick, as they are healed, they are singing. The believers, they are singing. There's going to be joy, joy we never knew before in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of your closet and come out of that cage where you are. And the power of the Lord will walk in your life in Jesus' name. Don't say you're unhappy. Don't say this happened and that one did not happen. Good things are going to happen to you. And so Jesus said, because they locked the door against themselves, he said, all right, behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Your family will not be left desolate. Your local church will not be left desolate. Your right hand, miracle. Yeah. 
your left hand miracle all around you miracle and you are the center miracle in jesus name we're coming to point number three now point number three we're looking at is taking the teachable and transformed as true members we're looking at three things here number one the intrusion of brothers and sisters from the human family number two the integration of believers and saints in the heavenward flock number three the integrity of body bearers and servants on the harvest field let's look at number one number one the intrusion of brothers and sisters from the human family we're looking at matthew chapter 12 reading from verse 46 while he yet taught while he was yet preaching while he was yet teaching teaching the people behold his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him and obviously they themselves they were not listening to his message well if jesus is a brother you know, from the human the same human family and they had family discussion they have been talking about this one is more important please go tell him i want his attention you know there are people like that they think the time christ was spending is too much we're waiting here wanting to come stop all that talk stop all the preaching stop all that teaching and come and attend to us desiring to speak with him obviously whatever they were going to talk will be earthly matter human matter mundane things local things temporary things he was talking and teaching of heaven of glory of the kingdom he was teaching something heavenly they didn't put any good price on the heavenly thing or the earthly uh, kind of thing they thought about that's what they put uh, value on that's why they intruded into his ministry but thank god you will not allow them you will not allow them you will know what's important you will know what's essential you will know what's high you will know what's heavenly and you will know what's of eternal value and your concentration and your focus will be on eternal heavenly things in jesus name look at verse 47 in verse 47 then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee Look at verse 48. In verse 48, but he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? He had told the mother back in Luke chapter 2, Why were you seeking for me? Did you not know I must be about my father's business? And he was still in his father's business. There are some that will never learn the lesson. It happened before. And he told them, I must be about my father's business. He told them before, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He told them before, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can walk they never got the message but you know if people don't get the message and they come again with the same old demand you must repeat the message and say i am at my father's work 
and no intrusion will come between me and that father's work that's how the work of god will prosper in your life in jesus name look at verse 48 again but he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother and who are my brethren look at nehemiah chapter 6 we're looking at verse 3 nehemiah chapter 6 looking at verse 3 and i sent messengers unto them saying i am doing a great work sambalat did not put that same value on the work Nehemiah was doing. You are the one to put value on the work you are doing. Tobias did not put that same value on the work Nehemiah was doing. You are the one to put the value on the work you are doing. The work of the kingdom. I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it? and come down unto you look at verse 4 they will not give up yet they sent unto me four times after they sought and i answered them after the same manner if they will not give up their intrusion then you should not give up your own concentration if they will not give up calling you out of the work stop the work don't do that again don't do it again do that again if they are so adamant then you too must be adamant as you do the work of god in jesus name this work that's how it will prosper in your hand and that's how your reward on earth and your reward in the, in heaven will be great greater than you ever imagined in jesus name look at number two here number two is the integration of believers and saints in the heaven watch flock we're looking at matthew chapter 12 verse 49 and he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said behold my brother and my brethren Verse 50, then he said in verse 50, For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Doing the will of God. Are they here today? Where are they? The Lord says, You, brother, sister, mother, father there, doing the will of God, you are a member of the heavenward family. And all that the Father will do for his family, he will do in your life. He will do in my life. Look at number three. Number three here is the integrity of burden bearers and servants on the harvest field. It tells us in John chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus answered them, My father walketh hitherto, and I walk. That was his principle. That was his plan. That was his purpose. That was the thing that drove him on. My father walketh hitherto. And I walk, and that should be your plan, your purpose, your goal, and your propelling force. My father is still at work, my savior is still at work, my father walketh either to my savior walketh either to, and I walk. You'll keep on walking. Bastachi in Bastachi, he tells us, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 38. Chapter 6, verse 
38, John chapter 6, verse 38, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. You are a saint man. You are a saint woman. And so the Lord has given you